Example two of our class examples from Saturday, October 12th, asks us to prepare a bank reconciliation on this information that we see here, and it's a lot of information. The first thing that we're gonna to need to do is start with the bank statement balance. And that's given right at the top. The very first sentence says the bank statement shows a balance of 14,632. And 12 cents. Now we need to figure out what should be included in this 14, six, in the bank statement balance that wasn't included, um, likely due to timing differences. Part A says outstanding checks were 13, 20, 25. So we need to know what are outstanding checks. It's checks that the company's accountant or somebody in the company wrote out, and we would write a check. We record the journal entry, of course, but these checks haven't, they've said that it's cash going, a cash payment has been made, but it hasn't actually cleared the bank. So this 1320 hasn't been deducted from the company's bank balance, but it will be within probably one to three days. So we don't wanna be spending that money. We don't really have it. It's gonna be gone very soon. So we're gonna subtract from this bank statement balance the 1320.25 for outstanding checks. And let's just go item by item. The next item says the December 31st cash on December 31st cash receipts of 575 were not deposited in the bank until January 2nd. So presumably, um, we had the company had cash. It planned to make the deposit, uh, but it just hasn't. So it, this 575 is not included in the bank balance. But in a, a day or two, it will be. It's set aside for that. So let's add that in. So this is uh, deposits not yet deposited. Maybe we should use another name for that. Maybe I should say cash not yet deposited. Five seventy five. Let's add that. That'll hit soon. See one check written in payment of rent for two forty six was correctly recorded by the bank. Okay, so if it was done correctly on the bank, we don't need to make an adjustment to the bank. So let's hold off on this. You know, put a little star because that's gonna have to adjust our cash balance or our, our book balance. D says in accordance with the prior authorization, the bank withdrew 450 directly from the checking account to make a payment on behalf of the company. All right, so if they withdrew it, they knew that's already included in the bank balance of 14,632. Bank service charges of 14 are listed on the bank statement, so they're included. These are items I'm starring. All need to be adjustments to the cash account, the ledger account, or the book balance. F, a deposit of 875 was recorded by the bank on December 13th, but it did not belong to MSI, to the company. The deposit should have gone into another company's account. So this was an error made on behalf of the bank. So we need to subtract out this 875 from the bank statement balance of 14,632. And presumably, once they've caught this error in the next in the next few days, they will actually pull the funds out of MSI's the company's account and put it into the correct company's account. So let's subtract out 875. Next, the bank statement included a charge of $85 for an F NSF, a non-sufficient funds check. Well, if the bank statement included it, we don't need an adjustment. The company has a petty cash fund, so that's not related to the bank statement. And then uh, the fact that the company asked the bank to withdraw some from its checking account and put it into some investments, um, that was done on December 30th or recorded on December 31st. Um, that's all included in the 14,632, so no other adjustment is needed. Now we get to our true cash balance or our adjusted cash balance. When we add all this up, we should get to $13,011.87. Now we have all the information we need. Now, normally in these problems, we are gonna know, in the real world, we're gonna know what our book balance is or our cash balance is. 
This is the company's cash account. We would know it, but in this problem, we're not given it. So we need to know that our adjusted or true cash balance is going to be the same regardless of whether we're starting with the bank statement or the book balance. We're still coming back to that adjusted cash balance. So we know this number here must be the same, 1301187. And we're going to have to back into this book balance. So let's go through this information that we have and decide what needs to be adjusted on to the company's books. All right, we already accounted for the outstanding checks. We already accounted for the outstanding deposits. The check written for rent by the company, it was the check was written for 246. The bank made it for 246. The check was for 246, but the journal entry that was recorded was recorded as a $264 payment. So let's correct that error. The way that I like to do this is just to undo what had originally been done. Uh, we had, sorry, we had paid out the 264 on our books. Let's add that back. Let's undo that cash payment on our books, not the actual payment, just our entry. And then let's make it for the right amount, which was 246. The bank withdrew $450 directly from the checking account of the company on a note payable. So the funds were automatically withdrawn from the company's account. The company realizes this as they're trying to figure out exactly how much cash we have. Well, we didn't make this journal entry because we didn't know it was done. We're not reconciling every single day. At this one point in time, we're doing a reconciliation. We need to account for this $450 withdrawal. The interest portion was $350, so the principal portion was $100. So payment of no payable plus interest. And I'll just make a note for myself that 350 was the interest and 100 was the note, the principal on the note. And the reason that I, I need to know what was interest and what was on the note is because we're not just doing this reconciliation, we're actually going to do the journal entries to correct those book balances. And I'll do that at the end. Okay, uh, bank service charges of $14 were listed on the bank statement. Okay, this is when the company is realizing this is what we, the cost that we incurred. So we need to subtract that from our cash account, make that journal entry. A deposit of $875, we said that that was needed to be corrected by the bank and we did that reconciliation here. The bank statement included a charge of $85 for a non-sufficient funds check. Okay, so we are looking at the bank statement. We're realizing one of the checks that we deposited from a customer for $85, we recorded the journal entry, cash went up $85, accounts receivable went down $85. We just are realizing now that that didn't clear, it, it that check bounced from our customer. So we need to, we had made that deposit, we didn't really get the money, so we need to subtract out that $85. And this is for the non-sufficient funds check. Okay, so subtract out the payment, subtract out the payment, subtract out the amount of the non-sufficient funds check. And then what I can do is sum cash balance plus 264 minus 246 plus minus 450 minus 14 minus 85 equals 13011.87. And we can back into what this book or cash balance must be, and it should work out to be $13,542.87. Okay, so now we have our bank statement, our bank reconciliation completed. Then the next step, item two, is prepare the necessary adjusting journal entries. And so what we're saying is let's fix the books by actually doing the journal entries from these adjustments here. All right, so the first thing is our error. Let's go back to the information for the error. The check was written in payment of rent. So we wrote the check for 246 
and then we debited rent expense as 264 and we credited cash as 264 but it should have been for 246 so our initial entry debit rent expense 264 credit cash 264 that should have been debit to rent expense for 246 so our rent expense was too high based on what we recorded so i'm going to credit to reduce rent expense for the difference between the 264 and the 246 or $18 and we had written in our books that our cash went down by 264 our cash should have only gone down by 246 so again that same difference I'm going to increase my cash by $18 next I have the payment, all, all these items that the bank took care of that we're just finding ab out about now, that our note payable, $100 note payable had been paid. So this next entry, I'm going to do a compound entry to account for all of these items and one credit to cash for the rest of these, these items here. I'm going to credit to decrease notes payable for 100 for the automatic withdrawal. The automatic withdrawal was 450, 100 was for note payable, and the rest of it was for interest. So I'm going to debit interest expense for 350. Now, if I were to stop here, I would have a credit of cat to cash of 450. But what I'm going to do is just keep going and then do one net credit to cash. So the next item is bank charges. So I have bank B expense or bank charge expense or miscellaneous expense for the $14. And then the NSF check was originally a check. We didn't know it was going to be NSF. We got cash, a check from a customer who recorded a debit to cash and a credit to accounts receivable to reduce the receivable from that customer. Well, we didn't get the cash and we shouldn't have taken out the receivable. So we're going to debit accounts receivable to put that receivable back on the books. We're going to book this entry, then we're going to call that customer or show up at the front door of that customer's house with our baseball bat and say, you owe us uh, $85. And then the other side is the credit, the cash for $85, right? So we're crediting cash for the $85, the $14, the $350, and the $100. We're going to credit cash for a total of $549. And that's it for the bank reconciliation portion. Item three asks, what would the company report as cash and cash equivalents in the current asset section of the balance sheet? So what's in our cash and equivalents? Well, first of all, it's going to be the bank statement balance or the checking account balance, which we were given as 13011.87. We didn't, weren't given, we figured that out here. And then we need to go to this last piece of information. Um, on December 30th, so whatever we had in this bank statement balance is after this transaction has taken place, the company, the bank withdrew $10,000 from the account. And on behalf of the company, it purchased treasury bills. MSA recorded the book, so it's all included in what we see in this book balance. Uh, half of the treasury bills mature in two months and the other half in six months so the reason that we're told to that is that these two months are going to be included in as cash equivalents but the ones that mature in six months are not cash equivalents they would go into a marketable securities or short-term investment account separately listed on the balance sheet outside of cash and equivalents okay so five thousand of the Treasury bills, the ones with the two month maturity are going to be included. And then there's one more item I think I overlooked here. In H, the company maintains a $200 petty cash fund. Okay, so that means that there's just cash sitting around in the office. Um, it's not in the bank statement. We just know that that's what we have. So we need to include that.
and this should work out to be $18,211.85. And this would be reported in that first line under the current assets of our cash and cash equivalents.